The hungry, eerie Sichthan who ate himself to death. Have you ever imagined anyone would be as hungry as to eat themselves? I mean, a couple of very extreme circumstances could make one think of cutting up part of himself to quench his hunger for food, but never to the extent of eating oneself to death. Well, this is the story of an ancient Greek king who ate himself to death. Eri Sishthan, whose name translated to Terror of the Earth, son of Triopus, was a Thessalian king punished by a goddess. With fearful hunger for an unforgivable crime he committed against her. In this video, we'll be telling you the tale of the king who ate himself to death and how he brought such a curse upon himself. The story may belong to an agricultural religion, which also refers to the infernal regions. The story begins with King Erishishthan trying to build a new banquet hall for all of his merrymakings, ordered all the trees in the sacred grove of Demeter, the goddess of harvest, to be cut down. This was a conclusion he arrived at before seeking the counsel of his advisors. Now, before we go any further, let's talk a little about Erishisthon and his family tree. Erishisthon is believed by ancient Greek mythology as the son of Triopus, who, according to some sources, is the son of Poseidon, potentially one of the Halides the name given to the daughters of the god Helios and Oceanid Clymen, as no one knows their actual names, and Hesilla, a daughter of Mimredin. This, therefore, makes Erisisthan a brother to Forbis and Epiphamedia. Now that we're all caught up, let's get back to the tale. Erisisthan and 20 of his mighty attendants, men who could be likened to men giants who were able to lift a whole city, wielded double axes, and the hatchets marched into the grove of Demeter. Ancient Roman history has it that this grove was located at Dadium in Thessaly. The forest abounded with all sorts of trees such as pines, mighty elms, pear trees, fair sweet apple trees, and ditches that gushed up water as it were of amber. This was a place the goddess loved and cherished a lot. So, they went into this sacred grove with the intention of ridding the area of the trees that gave the place life. In the midst of the trees lay a poplar, a great tree reaching to the sky covered with votive wreaths, a symbol of every prayer Demeter had granted, and oftentimes dryads, tree spirits, or tree nymphs would dance underneath the shade of the poplar and often hand in hand around its trunk. The attendants who were in Ereshithan knew of the tree and its importance and were wary of cutting it down. Upon the command of their king to cut down the tree, they hesitated. Erishisthan, sensing their hesitance, snatched an axe and said, Be this the tree the goddess loves. Be this the goddess himself. It's a leafy crown shall touch the ground today. He also said that he would stop at nothing to build a hall befitting for banquets for all his companions. Unknown to the king, the goddess of just retribution, Nemesis, recorded his vile and arrogant words. In a slanting pose, he lifted the axe and struck the tree. The poplar shuddered, groaned, and shouted an anguished cry, which was heard by other trees and the goddess. The leaves on the tree grew pale as well as every branch. This didn't dissuade Erishathon as he struck the tree once more, wounding the trunk with blood flowing from the severed bark, just as blood would flow from the neck of a cow being sacrificed before an altar. All his men were in shock and could only watch as blood gushed out of the tree, but one was bold enough to speak against the act. Erisishthan looked at the attendant who had spoken, turned his axe against the man, and cut his head off before he was going back to hack down the tree blow by blow. Then from the deep of the tree's heart came a voice that prayed a great punishment from Demeter to the man who had brought about her death. This voice was no ordinary voice, but that of Demeter's most favorite nymph. Erisishthan finally brought the tree down, hauled it down with ropes, and the mighty tree crashes down with its weight, destroying the nearby trees. Heartbroken by what had happened in the grove as well as the loss of her sister, Dryades clothed herself in the morning black, went up to Demeter, and prayed for punishment on Erishathon. Demeter was moved by all that had happened and plotted the most piteous punishment, a punishment so pitiful it could defeat the aim of his deed. The goddess of the harvest sent out to the journey to find Limos, the goddess of relenting and insatiable hunger. But since she and Limos could never meet, she urged a mountain spirit to take her message to Limos. She set the spirit on a chariot that rode through the air. The spirit arrived in Cynthia, on a peak granite with humans called the Caucasus. 
and set out to find Lemos. The spirit found her in a stubborn stony field, fearing to get too close, stood afar and hastily delivered Demeter's message. Though the spirit was only there for a short time, it had started to feel a great hunger within it. It grabbed the reins of the Dracones, and soaring high, she drove back to Harmonia. Lemos did Demeter's bidding, albeit both having opposite aims and purposes, she wafted down the wind, reached Erisishthan's palace, and at once entered into his room and he slept, wrapped him around her arms, and breathed upon him, filled with him with herself throughout his mouth, throat, and lungs. After she was done, she returned to her bleak home, as Erishithan slept. He dreamt of eating various delicacies while he clamped down empty air. But as he woke, the peace and euphoria had left. A furious appetite reigned in his throat, and his belly felt like a burning furnace. The king ate all that was within the palace. Twenty maids prepared the banquet for him, while twelve drew wine banquet after banquet he consumed, and as he finished one, he would yell for another to be brought in. The more the king ate, the hungrier he became. His belly was like the depths of the sea. Not only did he consume all he could find during the day, but he also tormented in his sleep with dreams of food and banquets. His condition only got worse despite the efforts of his father to lift the curse. His father, Triopas, prayed to his father to come to the aid of his grandson because they were fast running out of food in the palace and the kingdom at large, but Poseidon turned a deaf ear to his prayers. The fear of his insatiable hunger made his family stop him from attending any banquet or function they were invited to. They dreaded the embarrassment it would bring them, and as the rivers flow to fill the sea which never gets filled, or as fire never refuses fuel, so was the wicked appetite of the king. It was only a matter of time before his belly's deep abyss exhaust his ancestors wealth. But did that make the hunger cease? No, it continued to ravage the kingdom of all there was to eat. All his fortune and slaves were all sold till there was nothing left for his beautiful daughter Mestra. Not long after, he sold his daughter into slavery just so he could have something to eat in return. Mestra, being high-born, didn't wish to be owned by anyone and prayed to who some sources say was her lover Poseidon for help. She stretched forth her hands to the seas as she prayed, and Poseidon granted her prayer by giving the ability to shapeshift into another person. She used his ability to free herself from her master. When Erishisthan realized that his daughter possessed such abilities, he sold her time and time again for a mare, a cow, a deer, and all that the king collected in exchange for his daughter was either spent on food as eaten directly as food. Eventually, the king was so hungry he began to gnaw himself, and bite by bite, he used his own flesh to satisfy his insatiable hunger. He eventually literally ate himself to death. Such a terrible way to die. Well, that's a wrap on today's video. We do hope you enjoyed watching the video, and if you did, kindly leave a like on the video. What do you make of the tale of Erishithan? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.